Welcome to Wonders and Miracles podcast, where we celebrate miraculous moments in everyday lives. I'm Liza Lawrence. I'm glad to have you join me as we celebrate wonders and miracles together. Well, I am really excited today to have my friend Emily on the show. She's from Wyoming, and she was actually a student of mine in my child development class. And I have to say she was one of the more inspiring people I've ever met (laughs) because of her story. And I'm super excited to have her share her story. When she was just a little girl, she was in a car accident and had some brain injuries. And the grit and the determination that she showed going through her life has been amazing. So Emily, thank you for being on the show. And I'm excited to hear the details of this story. I haven't heard a lot of the details. I just knew pieces. So thanks for being here and go ahead and tell us your story. Thank you, Liza, for having me. And it's an honor to be here. To start off with my story, like you were saying, I was really little when I was in a car wreck. My mom and my little brother and I were driving back from town, which is about a half hour from Afton to Etna, where we lived at the time. And we just were turning into our house off the busy highway. And it was winter time in January. And my mom slid into oncoming traffic when she was slowing down. And she hit the truck head on and it threw us into the borrow pit. And at that time, I was two and a half years old. But I was taken off my seatbelt the moment we were turning in to the driveway to put my coat on. And that's when I, I flew forward and hit my head on the dashboard, which was a blessing that I didn't go through the window. I don't remember any of this because I was really little, but this is going to kind of be a perspective through my mom's story in a sense. Um, my little brother was in the car seat in the back seat on the floor, and he was luckily, he was very protected. And he was one years old, so we're about 18 months apart. My mom was ambulance to our hometown hospital and I ended up being life flighted to Ermac in Idaho Falls and my father flew with me there and my little brother he ended up being okay and, and so my journey in the hospital I was there about two weeks I was unconscious for about three days the doctors and they had like a whole staff of team just trying to figure out like what's wrong with me because they were run all these tests. They were just very puzzled because there was nothing after CAT scans. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. And I was just fading away even more each day. And when my mom got better, she came to see me and then my dad was still there. I think like the first problem, like my mom said, when we went to the hospital, the infant care facility, the floor was on quarantine. So they couldn't put me there. So that was the number one mistake of, I guess, my journey there at the hospital. They didn't really understand how to take care of infants in the CC unit, which was a critical care for adults. So at the time, they were doing their best. And I had a wonderful doctor, Dr. Beaver. She was able to take really good care of me, but she was concerned that I was fading away. And one day she came in right at the same time and i know that this was god intervention right there because the team that would come in and take blood samples there was this lady that came in ready to take my vials and the doctor asked this lady what kind of vials are you using for this baby and she holds up the vials and the doctor gasped and said these are vials for adults not for babies and so they were taking at least two or three ounces of blood out of me each day for samples so in that condition of me having the injury and then trying to heal wasn't happening because the blood wasn't recirculating through my brain and through my body and so in that way it was really difficult (laughs) and so the doctor just told the lab technicians to leave and that we need to have a blood transfusion immediately because if we took that last drop of blood I could have been gone. My parents and everybody at home was praying for me and just hoping that 
you know, I could recover. So the doctor was able to find like my blood type and do a blood transfusion. And they didn't have time for my brothers to give blood and go through the lab. So it had to just be what they had, which was a, another miracle. Once I was able to receive blood, um, I was able to wake up in a few hours and my mom said the cheeks in my face started to become more pink and I was able to respond. I feel like that was probably the experience that my mom said if I was able to receive blood earlier and the, the injury in my head could have healed a lot quicker. Before I got the blood infusion, my father gave a special blessing of prayer to be able to make sure that blood would go through me. And he had another friend that worked there at the hospital that they were able to both pray together over this blood. And so that was the miracle of right there blessing me to be able to receive this blood. My journey after getting home, I had a really big bump on my head. My mom said I slept with them for a while and be able to recover. It's been an amazing journey throughout my whole life. I obviously didn't know about this experience in my life till later on when I was old enough to understand what happened. We had a lot of setbacks because of the experiences in the hospital. I realized we can turn situations into opportunities and life lessons. And I think that's where my journey begins of realizing how blessed and how lucky I was to be able to, to live and to come, basically come back and be able to experience life and to experience what God has in store for me. I definitely give a lot of gratitude and thanks to my parents and for their love and support through my journey, because without them, I don't know where I'd be. And I try to like condense everything I've learned throughout my life into a little short story and I think I came up with like five life lessons that has gotten me through the tough times and through my journey and so throughout my the rest of my story I will continue to share the five life lessons that reoccur in my life and has helped me in any situation. After I recovered I was able to you know continue to develop and grow. When I was about four years old I started talking a lot about, maybe even three, talking a lot about babies and telling my mom about, I have a little brother and a sister. And she asked me one day, she's like, did you see Jesus when you were on the other side? And I know, and I believe that I was on the other side for a time because my spirit was not coherent in my body. And I just told my mom, I played with the little kids and I pointed to a picture of Jesus and of angels in the picture. And I kept telling her and talking to her about babies. And I played with a little girl and a little boy. And I was very adamant at that age. I'm like, no, I need a brother and a sister. And so my mom got pregnant and she had six kids at the time. And they were not going to have any more kids. <laughs> and I told her, no, there's two more babies, a boy and a girl. And she got pregnant. And nine months later, she had a baby and I was so excited. My Nana, my mom's mom told me, she's like, oh, it's a baby boy. And I was so mad and upset. And I'm like, no, I'm like, where is the baby girl? <laughs> and I was just so mad, but I, I told my mom, there's a baby girl. And so two years later, she had a baby girl. <laughs> I remember at that time, at that age, I was praying every night for a little sister. <laughs> And finally, my little sister, Abigail, she comes into the picture. My parents have eight kids. <laughs> I love that story. That is so sweet. I feel like that experience, if it was anything for that, my experience of going to the other side was maybe just to help not forget my two other little brothers and sisters. So it's really neat how our experiences can really affect other people. I think that's probably like the number one thing I'd like to say I, I've learned throughout my life is, you know, sometimes our experiences are not about us. Maybe life isn't even about us. It's about someone else. And then we can fast forward as I started going to school. So yeah, it was in first grade. They did like this reading program and testing where to put kids. 
and I at that time didn't really test very high on the reading and they suggested to my mom it would be a good idea if they could put me on an IEP which is an individual learning plan to help me receive the extra help that I needed in order to be successful in school and so they decided to go with that. I remember a at a young age, I was really confused at all the time why I was taking out of classes and why I was always not ever with my friends in reading. So during that time, I, I would just go along with it and I was a very patient child and just trying to be happy Emily. My siblings would say, Emily lives in a bubble. <laughs> I always try to be happy and experience life as the fullest. and. Even though it was hard for me to read, my mom has given me the greatest gift, the gift of her time. You know, having eight kids and helping them all with homework. My father would help sometimes, but he definitely had a lot going on. I grew up on a dairy farm, and that says enough in itself. Right. <laughs> yes. So growing up, so my mom would help me every night with homework and read to me. And I remember there was probably times I wasn't as patient. It was very, would get very agitated or upset, but my mom just kept going and being very loving and kind and um, always encouraging me and always telling me that I can do it and believe in me. I give a lot of credit to her in my success with school. Going through elementary, I, I didn't have a lot of confidence in myself. My mom taught me a lot about forgiveness and a lot about being grateful. I would say that would be the next two things on my list of like life lessons is gratitude and forgiveness. Being grateful for our circumstances and being grateful for the people around us. Um, my parents are very <laughs> grateful people and have taught me that gratitude can change perspective. Once I was an, old enough to understand my experience back when, when I was two years old and the wreck, I had to work through a lot of expressing gratitude for it and forgiving, forgiving the doctors, forgiving myself, forgiving my mom. My parents, they are very wise people and they are always lifetime learners. And before I was born, they learned about a method called stress management of learning how to deal with your emotions and your stresses. That's been our saving, one of our saving grace in our family of just trying to use these tools and help us um, identify what we are feeling and be able to release that emotion and move on with your life. And it is so freeing when you're able to identify something so hard to be able to release it. Also with forgiveness in the scriptures, in the Bible talks about how Christ says, forgive 70 times seven. And sometimes, you know, forgiveness is like layers <laughs> like onions and sometimes we always have to continue to do that as we transition into junior high that is you know the stage where everyone's like comparing themselves are they better than others and then you know girls starting to like guys and boys like girls and <laughs> the awkward stage you could say <laughs> Once again, my mom would help me even more. I'm in junior high. She would stay up doing assignments with me without end. And I had a lot of help through the special ed department. They had aides that would go to classes with you and help you. At first, I wasn't quite sure about that because, you know, a kid in junior high could be a little bit embarrassed. But for me, I didn't feel that way. I felt complete gratitude. Yeah, there was times I was taken out of the class to do tests and I didn't like being the center of attention ever of leaving the class. But, you know, through my journey there, I probably when I was in eighth grade, I realized, you know, this is okay and this is what I need. And I became really good friends with all my teachers. It taught me how to communicate. It taught me how to advocate for myself and say, I need this and I need to be able to need some extra time. And every time without question, my teachers would be very understanding and they know that I am a hard worker and they know that I can put forth the effort. So I just, I give a lot of thanks to my teachers too and those teachers aides and like they're all my really good friends. Through junior high, it was, I was gonna try to change my mindset and my beliefs about myself. 
that's a different experience than most kids would go through. Yeah, it sounds like you were much more mature in a lot of ways than most teenagers at that age. Yes, you could say so. <laughs> and then transferring to high school, so the freshman year through senior year, I definitely continued to mature and be able to see things through a new light. I have this phrase my mother always taught me. She's always learning about new things. And it's a phrase called hope ponapona. And it's a Hawaiian term for healing. And hope ponapona means I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. I'm grateful. Those powerful words that I learned freshman year changed my life. Once again, I continued to have teacher's aides that came to classes and helped me and read tests to me. I was in a reading class. I had a hard time at first connecting with my teacher during that, in that reading class. And I wasn't quite sure how I was going to learn. And I know that it was a gift because as I learned Hoponopona, I would say that phrase over and over again, going to school freshman year in all my classes and especially my reading class. And it changed my heart towards that teacher. And we became best friends. She helped me so much and so grateful for her patience and her love. I love Hoponopono. I use that a lot as well. And it has helped me with forgiveness and changing my heart as well. I think it's a powerful tool. So that's cool that you used that and saw the results of it. I love that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that's another journey of, you know, the people in my life. And I've recognized, even though I may struggle, when I did struggle at that time with reading, God was blessing me and filling me with people in my life. Each year in high school got, I wouldn't say easier because the subjects have gotten harder. <laughs> and my mom was there constantly continuing to help me be able to become a better reader. And I would say the, the fourth lesson that I learned growing up is mindset. It is so crucial how we program our mind. And one thing that really helped me during my sophomore year was words of affirmations. I would write down affirmations like, I am smart, I am beautiful, I am enough. I would also visualize myself going into a test and, and acing that test and understanding it and be able to have the confidence. The teacher's aides had to read the test to me and explain it. And it would take me twice as long as a, another student would take on a test. But I was very thorough in, in my test taking skills and just wanted to do my best. I would stay up hours studying and trying to figure out some different ways for my brain to connect with the information. My perseverance and my determination, it started on the farm. <laughs> my parents are very hard workers and because of their example, I knew that I could do anything just like how they believed they could do anything. My senior year, there was an experience that happened at the beginning. So senior year is exciting because you want to graduate. <laughs> You're ready to move on. For me, it was a little bit different because I, I had a lot of fears. I had a lot of emotions going through me if I was ready to leave the nest. This summer, right before my senior year, my grandpa had a heart attack and he was put into the hospital and he was there for a couple months and then he got staph infection and then he was in there even longer. Pretty much most of my senior year, my grandpa was in the hospital for eight months. So that was a lot of stress in my family and watching my mother struggling. And my mom and my grandma would drive to Idaho Falls five times a week to go see my grandpa. And Which how long of a drive is that from where you were? About two hours. You know, when that's all happening, it's my senior year. During that time, I had a choice. Am I going to let this experience ruin my senior year or make me feel depressed or sad? And there's something that came so strong within me. And I think it's been a part of me always is letting go of your own problems and focusing on others. You know, our experiences might not be all about us. And I think that comes down to service. My parents taught me a lot about you know, serving others, even though it was stressful, I started this game for myself to 
pick a word each day to live by. Today's gonna be a bright day and I would look for everything to be bright and wonderful. Or today's gonna be excellent. And so I would continue to do that. And then I love quotes and I started to print off quotes and I felt prompted one day to share it with a teacher my senior year. And then the next day I felt like doing it again. And this was the beginning of October. And I started doing this weekly, finding a quote and printing off 20 copies of it and just going around the school in the morning before the bell rang and would drop it off at like all my favorite teachers and students in the library and just people who I felt like who needed it. And I felt so joyful and I felt so happy. And I'm like, what is this? Like my life is kind of upside down right now. And I don't know what's happening. And I continued to do that for the whole year. It was the most incredible feeling in my heart because I gained so much love and respect for all the people that I, I gave. And even some people that I may have been intimidated before, but it wasn't about me. It was about them. I have to show you, this is a book. In this book are all the quotes that I gave to the teachers and the people in the high school at that time. And the end of my senior year, one of my teachers and friends, she saved every quote and made a book for me and gave it to me for my graduation present. And she had all the teachers that I gave quotes to, they wrote their goodbyes and they wrote inspiring words to me and it said, anytime that I'm in college and discouraged, remember how special I am and open this book and read the quotes. And one of the quotes I lived by that senior year was, celebrate what's right in the world by a famous photographer named White. And I was so grateful for this book. I didn't know that someone would save all these quotes because I was just doing this thing because it made me feel good. But they told me how much it changed their life. And some of them were going through trials in their own. And I think it's neat how we can help each other through each other's trials even without knowing. So when I went to college, I took this book with me and it helped me when I had the hard times. Oh, I was just in shock when they gave it to me. That is probably, I'm over here crying because that is one of the sweetest, most inspiring things I've actually ever heard. What an incredible thing to think to do. And then what a sweet gift for them to make you a book. Like so t amazing. I'm just, truly touched by that. Wow. Thank you. I, I was really touched when they gave it to me. And so after eight months in the hospital, my grandpa ended up passing away and it was a hard time. But then I continued to do the quotes. I feel blessed and that God inspired me to do it and helped me find something to feel happy about. Yes, that is inspiring. Though I may have felt the most peace ever in high school, my senior year, and felt confident and I learned a lot of new skills. I was very nervous about college and didn't even know what I really wanted to go into, but I knew it was something with children. Freshman year was really difficult and I can't even explain like how hard it was. And so I went freshman year for two semesters and then I ended up serving a mission for my church and I was able to experience a lot of confidence um, on my mission. And after my mission, I was thinking like, okay, this is it. I'm back in college. I know what I'm doing with life. And that was not the case. <laughs> I struggled. One day I went through the Clark building on campus at BYU, Idaho, and I just felt this overcoming feeling of peace of like, this is where you belong. So I looked into what classes were offered in that building. And I took a child development class, and that is where I met you, Liza. It was in your child development class, and I have to say that was probably one of the most inspiring classes I have ever taken on campus, just because of the way you taught it. And I, Thank you. you're welcome. And that was my sophomore year, and if you remember, I had a lot of emotions during that class and, and had some struggles. But I don't know if I ever did tell you, it was winter time and I, I've never experienced so much darkness in my life. I had very suicidal thoughts that semester and it scared me. I did not know I could feel that much darkness. I think this is the, the other life lesson I would say is turning to prayer. That really saved me. 
saving grace, praying with all my heart and with all my might, and helping me um, overcome this challenge of thinking negative thoughts about dying and not being here and not feeling important. I definitely remember during that time I was walking through campus, and this is after many months of praying and receiving special blessings and prayers. I had this thought as, Emily, you got to change your perspective. And that goes back to gratitude. Another, you know, the life lesson of gratitude. And so I started to express gratitude. And I started to talk with my roommates and started to write my feelings down. It was through God who saved me and relying on my Savior, Jesus Christ, my saving grace, be able to help me recognize the seed of greatnesses that I did have and what I did have to offer and that it is worth living. You know, God has spared my life many times. I know that there is a purpose and I have something great to offer. And yeah, there, the adversary is going to do everything they can to stop you from doing your mission. So giving a lot of thanks to my parents and even to you, Isaac, like you helped me a lot that semester. So I'm eternally grateful for that. Well, thank you. And I'm honored to have played a little role in your life. But I remember you that semester. I, and I was inspired by you because I, I knew you had been struggling, but you were an amazing advocate for yourself. And you knew how to advocate for yourself and find resources. I didn't know you were struggling that deeply. So I feel bad that I didn't offer more support. <laughs> I always felt like you were just such an inspiring, hard worker and so determined to get through the hard times. Thank you. I, I definitely know that God placed us in each other's path for a reason. And what you did offer and what you did share was enough. It was what I needed at that time. You know, in life, we, we hit rock bottom sometimes. And I think that's when we learn to fly and we learn where God can lift us and carry us. And that was my Gethsemane moment in trying to really rely on the power of God. After that, I chose child development. It was just incredible how I was able to learn about children, but also to learn about myself, learn about how I develop, to learn about how I think and be okay with who I am. And it wasn't until after I hit rock bottom, I learned to really truly appreciate and be grateful for my experiences in the past. I remember when I was little, I would always blame the wreck, but I am not the wreck. I am who I choose to be. It took me till at least my <laughs> junior year in college to learn that lesson that, you know, I am who I choose to be. And even though I may have had all these tools, all the dots connected together and be able to help me discover who I am. And I didn't feel any shame after that about my past and about my journey because everything that happened was supposed to happen. After that, I, I continued being an advocate for myself in college and be able to connect with my teachers. And, oh, I made them work for their money <laughs> because I would ask them all the questions and then I would have a tutor for all my classes. And I was very diligent and dedicated to my studies. My senior year in college, I decided to stay full time. And that was a miracle in itself because financially, I didn't know how I was going to do it. And I always worked during the summertime to make money for school. And I just felt very strongly that I needed to stay there. And I did. I ended up finding a job on campus as a tutor for the ESL, which is English Transition Students, so students who are foreign and they come to, to the college and need extra help with their reading comprehension and, and English. This is a very ironic thing because I myself had struggled with that my whole life and has been tutored all growing up through school. Now it was me giving back to the God of the gifts that I have learned, and it helped me gain so much confidence of like, okay, I didn't even know what I'm doing, but I feel like I can help the student because I had compassion, I had patience, I had understanding. I loved that job so much. I love that. I love that that came full circle because you would have been perfect for that job. You knew how they felt. You'd been there. And so it's, I just see this full circle coming back to 
offering service where you had also needed service. I love it. It was an incredible experience. And I was also getting tutored as well. You know, it's, it's not a weakness. It's a strength to get help. I just am so grateful for God blessing me with people in my life that are inspiring, that uplift me, that we can both be um, an instrument to each other. Amen. I totally agree because we're here to help one another, to edify. There's not a single person that is only lifting others. They're also being lifted by others. I've seen that more and more in my life. Once again, I just want to recap like the five life lessons that I have learned in these five life lessons that I've experienced. First is like sometimes our experiences in life is not all about us. It's about others and being a service to them. And second, gratitude. Gratitude can change our perspective. What we put in is what we get out. And number three, forgiveness. Hope Punapona, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you, thank you, I'm grateful. The importance of forgiving 70 times seven, no matter what circumstances or what situation, forgiving yourself, forgiving others, forgiving the past, helping you move on. Because I know that as we forgive, our burdens are being lifted and we are connecting with God more. Number four, mindset. The power of the mind, of feeding the mind with good thoughts, with inspirational things, and be able to use words of affirmations and I am statements of saying, I am enough, I am beautiful, I am strong. And as we continue to program our minds with truth, with the words that God would want us to say and to tell us and to to uplift us, um, we can be able to be of service to others. And as we visualize in our mind what we want, set that goal, we can get there. We can be able to experience happiness and can be able to, to feel joy. And then number five is prayer. Praying always and connecting with God is probably the most powerful thing you can do because this life is about serving God and about connecting with him. And if we can do that, then we can um, get through anything. I give credit to my Savior, Jesus Christ, and, and to my Heavenly Father for everything that they have taught me in this life so far and continue and have got me to where I am today. And yeah, I'm on a journey and we're all on a journey. And I've experienced many life lessons like you have and everyone else. And we're going to have our ups and downs and we're going to continue to have those hard trials. But if we can remember God and turn to him, and that is the power of healing right there. Amen. I love it. And as I reflect on your life, I guess the thing that keeps I keep thinking of is growth. Like a journey, I, I feel like as human beings, we are in a process of growing and becoming. And so starting out, I loved how you took us at the very beginning, that journey and watching your transformation throughout it. And I'm sure you can see this as you reflect back on your life. I love that statement that you said, I am who I choose to be. You obviously have used your experiences and the struggles you've been through have created incredible growth in you. And like I said, you were one of those so inspiring people that I've ever met. <laughs> and truly watching you through the process through college. And I, I was so honored your senior interview. I only had you in one class, but we kept in touch. You were always so sweet to send a quote when I needed it or something <laughs> and come visit. But your senior interview. I think it was God orchestrating. I got to be the faculty that was in your interview. And I remember being emotional because I was like, I love Emily so much. I'm so honored to see her from the very beginning of her major to now I'm graduating and I've been successful. And I was just honored to see that whole process. It was very honorable to have you there. I was hoping and praying that you would be there. See, and the Lord just orchestrated that for mm -hmm. both of us. <laughs> he definitely did. I'm, I'm really, truly blessed to know you. Well, thank you. And I am blessed to know you too. I feel so grateful. Thank you. Could I end with a quote? Please do. Yes. Okay. 
One of my favorite quotes is by Albert Einstein, and it says, learn from yesterday, live for today, and hope for tomorrow. I love that. Thank you, Emily, so much. This was beautiful. I'm so honored to hear the full story and your journey, and you're amazing. Thank you. Thanks for letting me share my story. Thank you so much for listening to this miracle story. Please subscribe to my channel if you liked it. You can also find me on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and remember to notice and celebrate miracles.